Welcome to the student orientation video for the World War II simulation. My name is Mr. Harms and I'm the author. In this video I'm going to explain the different parts of the simulation and how they work. Don't worry about feeling overwhelmed, most people are at first, but within a day they become expert diplomats and strategists. The leader list lets everyone know who the leaders are of each country and in some cases who the foreign minister is. The president is in charge of the country and the foreign minister is in charge of negotiating with other countries and advising the president. Years. Each class period, 40 minutes, will represent one year, starting with 1939 and ending in 1945. The first day is 1938 and is called the orientation day, or the day the teacher will explain the rules to the simulation. The order of turns. The order of turns will be axis, then allies, then neutrals. The first thing you do is war. You use movement to attack countries or navies. In non-war, that's movement to move things that were not involved in war and were not used during the war phase. We will have as many turns as we can get in the period during the day and we will also always start where we left off. Here is an example turn. In this example, in this example turn, we're going to give you a brief, you a brief uh, viewing, of viewing of what a what turn, turn kind of looks, kind of looks like, like for a country. For a country. So let's, so let's say, say that, that Japan, Japan is, going is going to attack, attack North Central, Central China, China in the war, in the war phase. phase. So they move, so they move uh, 1,500, 1500 troops, troops into North Central, North Central China. China. And then and we have, then that, we have battle. that battle. And the Axis, and the Axis powers, powers are victorious. Are victorious. And so we'll, and so say, we'll say that, that we're kind of done, kind with, of done that with that phase. phase. So, so we're, going we're going to go into, into movement. movement. And we'll say, we'll that, say Japan that Japan now, now wants, wants to move, to move with their Navy, with their Navy um, 400, 400 troops. troops. So if I want so to move, want 400 move 400 troops to northeast, northeast China, China, I'm going to move my, my Navy over here. here. And I'm only going to I'm take 400 because that's all I'm going to move. So I'm going to split it. And then I'm going to move... 2,000, or I'm going to move 400, 400 troops, troops over here, over here. So, so set to 400, set to 400. And, now got and now we've got 1,600, 1600 in um, Japan, Japan and 400, 400 in Northeast North China. China, and that and 493, 493 was in the same, same zone, zone, so it's so not going to split, gonna split it, it, unless you unless change you zones. zones. So let's, so say, let's say, for example, for example uh, uh, we, that was that our, our non-war non movement. movement. Once we go Once into we go war into movement, war now we, we, we can't go and, go and then start another, another war somewhere. somewhere. Uh, uh, once, you once you decide that you're going to start, you're gonna start moving, moving things, things, then you, then have, to you have to stay in that, in that uh, movement phase. So that's so kind of what a movement in war looks like. You could do multiple wars. Um, it, doesn't it doesn't matter as long as you long don't, as you use, don't the use the same troops twice. twice. What, what I mean by that is I can't is take I can't these take troops now, now and attack South, South Central, Central China because I just used, used them during this during turn. This turn. Now, when it now, comes, when it back, comes around back around to, to uh, the, Axis uh, the Axis powers, powers again, again, then, then I, could I could do war with this group. But you always have to remember it's one zone per turn to move and it's one movement per turn for each army. Now, if I had split up different armies, then I could do it. So I could attack in multiple directions if I want to, but I just can't use the same troops. Like These are the 1,200 left from that war against North Central China. They can no longer move. I can't move them back to North East China. East China. I'm, only I'm only allowed one allowed move, one per, move turn. per turn. Now next now, turn next it starts, turn, it all, starts over all over again. again. So that's so really that's what, what and, and and kind of what an example, example turn, turn, turn looks like. Looks like. Armed forces strength. The number and quality will be different for each country. Only one country will be mobilizing during this game. All other countries have mobilized as much as they could. The military rating. This is a number from 1 to 6. Each country has a military rating that calculates into their overall rating. 1 equals poor and 6 is excellent. The natural resources rating, this is a number between 1 to 4. 
Each country knows how much of each resource it can acquire to have a full rating point for that resource. The four resources are oil, iron, coal, and rubber. Once you have one full credit of each, you cannot get any more points for that resource. So no matter how much you acquire, it'll stay the same. Your overall rating now, you add your natural resources rating and your military rating to determine your armed forces rating. The war map. Countries and zones. Colors, the allies are orange. The Axis powers are yellow. The neutrals are light green. The non-involved countries are light gray. And the unmanned countries are also light green. The sea zones are marked, as you can see, South China Sea, Philippine Sea, the West Pacific Ocean. Those are for battles and movements. Armies are signified by a country's flag with the number of troops below them. Army movement is one zone per turn as well. Navies are signified by a country's flag with an anchor. Navies can transport troops and fight naval battles, but cannot fight on land. Naval movement and transport. You can transport 100 troops on 100 tons of navy, which is normal naval movement. You can also transport other allies' troops. Natural resources. The black boxes are oil. The red boxes are coal. The maroon boxes are iron ore. And the green boxes are rubber. The Maginot Line is an impenetrable series of fortifications that prevents anyone from making a frontal assault on France. Its fortifications include pillboxes, machine gun nests, cannons, underground railroads, and troop barracks. France can attack from it, but you cannot attack through it unless you control F1. The Baltic Sea. At the start of the simulation, the Baltic Sea is open because the free countries of Norway and Denmark control the mouth. If one country controls both these lands, they would be able to control access to the Baltic Sea. Non-involved countries. Portugal, Spain, Mongolia, and Turkey are not involved in the simulation. You will not be able to invade them or do anything to them. Unmanned countries. Albania, Denmark, Estonia, Latvia, Lithuania, and Greece are countries involved in the simulation, but they are not manned. You may invade them or take them over. They may have some strategic importance, but they have no natural resource value. Transfer or capture of natural resources. You may transfer resources to other countries as you see fit. Transferring surplus resources to your allies is a smart move. If you transfer too many resources, you may lower your own rating. Captured resources automatically go in your stockpile. Transferred resources go on the next day. There are no real-time transfers of natural resources. All right, let's take right, a let's look, take at, a look the at the Natural, natural resources, resources Worksheet, worksheet calculator. calculator. This is, this is kind of a way kind of for, way for students, students to keep track of the resources, of the resources that, they that they have acquired and, and that, they have, that they have transferred to other countries. To other countries. Uh, we're going uh, to say, that, say we're that, Japan, that we're in Japan, and we're going to use, gonna a, fictitious use a fictitious military, military rating, rating of 1. one. And, and we're going to say that Japan has taken over the Dutch East Indies. The amount, the amount of resources that they have, that they have we're going to say, say for oil, oil is, five. is five. Actually, let's, Actually, say, let's one. say one. And, and what, they, what need they need is five. five. So, we know so we know what they what need. They need. Uh, their, uh, their overall rating, rating uh, says they're, uh, at, they're a at a point two, two uh, because, uh, they, because have they, they have one credit of oil, oil and they and need they five to fully fuel their army. And so we're going to so say, say that, that we've taken over the Dutch East Indies, which means, which we, means have we have acquired resources. resources. And, and in the Dutch, in the East, Dutch Indies, East Indies, we'll say, we'll they, say have they have oil. eight oil. 
And so now, so now uh, as, you uh, as you can see, our oil, oil rating, rating has gone to a 1.0, 1. 1. which is the which most, is the it, most can it can be. be. And, we and we also have a surplus, a surplus of four, of four. Uh, that, we uh, that we can share with our, with our allies. allies. So, let's so let's say that we decide we're going to transfer now. We're going to transfer some of our excess resources to Germany. And so this and is so a this transfer, is a transfer. It's, going it's going to be a negative, be a negative number. number. So we're transferring, so we're transferring four, credits four credits of oil. Of oil. Uh, now, uh, you now you can see that our rating stayed the, stayed the same because we because still we have what we have need, what we which need, is five which credits. Is five credits. Um, um, so we still so get a 1.0 for oil. For oil. And now, and now we've, got we've got an overall, overall rating of 2.0 2. because we've because only, we've used, only one, used one uh, uh, one of the one resources. Of the resources. And, you and you can see we have see boxes, we have boxes for, iron for iron ore, coal, coal and, rubber. and rubber. So all so these all resources, resources would be taken be care of uh, on this. Uh, on and this, this helps, and this helps keep track of what you've of done and what you've taken over. Um, um, and you should and be you able, should to, be able use to use the view resources, resources sheet, sheet to uh, see, uh, see how much, how much you, have, you have, uh, but, you uh, but you wouldn't be able to be see who you've transferred, transferred and all that and stuff, all that too. stuff so too. So this is a good way to keep it. We've got four different boxes down here, tabs, so that if you have more than one country, you can keep track of your resources separately of where they've gone to, and that'll just help keep you more organized. The read-only map. If you have devices in your classroom, computers, iPads, tablets, your teacher will have a read-only link to the teacher's war map. If you click on the View Resources button, you will be able to see how much of each resource that you have. National Strength. The National Strength document shows the size of each country's army and navy. It also shows what resources each country has and where they are located. Alliance Certificates. An alliance is an agreement between two or more countries to defend each other in the case of an attack. This is called a defensive alliance. An offensive alliance is when you are totally allied and are going to attack someone else together. Alliance documents are used to sign alliances between countries. If your alliance is secret, keep it in your binder and do not show the head table. Declaration of War. The Declaration of War document is signed by the President and handed into the head table or teacher to declare war and attack another country. If you are using a multinational force of several countries to attack another country, you must all turn in your declarations of war at the same time. You will not be able to add more troops after you have handed in your declarations. Top Secret Documents the top secret document will tell you how big your army and navy are. It will explain how your rating is right now. It will tell you what alliances you have. It will tell you the resources you have and the resources you need. It will give you a summary of your country and situation. And will also list the objectives that you are to achieve during the simulation. The World Situation Summary describes the political situation in the world in 1939. It also shows you the alliance system that was in place at that time. The Final Report The Final Report will be handed in at the end of the simulation. My advice to you is to work on it a little every day whenever you have downtime. Some questions will be answered from the simulation and you will have to do some research on others with the textbook or online. The first three pages are the same for everyone. The last page is based on your objectives. You will need to copy your objectives into the report and list the number of points they are worth. Do this before the simulation starts. You will need one report per country with all group members' names on it. You need to make a legitimate attempt to achieve your objectives to get the points. If you can explain why the teacher should give you those points, or if something happened beyond your control, you may get partial or full credit. The better the explanation, the more points you will get. Student journals. Each student will be required to have a journal with entries for each day. You should write about your thoughts, strategy, and the significant events that are affecting your decisions. Do not write about specific movements. Example, we moved 230 troops from F1 to F2. 
write it like a story, and make it compelling to read. Here is an example. Today was an up and down day. In North Africa, the Americans landed and easily swept aside the Italian troops that were defending it. I am torn about whether or not I should send German reinforcements to Africa when I am so close to winning the war in the East against the Soviets. I have been trying to persuade the Japanese to launch a simultaneous offensive against the Soviets, but they don't seem very interested. In the West, I have a very solid defense against an Allied invasion in occupied France, but the Americans and British are building up forces quickly. Tomorrow I am going to make one big push to try and finish off the Soviets. I am not sure what to do about Africa. I feel that if I let them in there, it will be just a matter of time before they are on my doorstep. I need to meet with my allies before class and secure their support. I may also have someone in the inside of the Allied coalition that may have some information for me. We shall see. Helpful advice. Make sure you have a plan before you come to class and be prepared to change it. Make sure you're good and rested. This simulation requires a lot of thinking and problem solving. You have to anticipate your opponent's reaction and anticipate their next move. This is going to get pretty intense. Be prepared for people to take this lesson personally. It always happens.